When you hear the words energy storage, the first thing that probably pops into your mind is batteries. The second is maybe fuels. But what if I told you that there was a third option, a way to store energy directly as heat, and that the solution for this was cheap, simple, and sustainable. Today, in this episode of Doing It Ourselves, I'm going to be talking about sand batteries and also going to try and build one. So without further ado, as always, let's get into it. Now, despite sand batteries being such a simple tech, it's only recently been widely adopted. The first major installations of sand batteries only started around a couple of years ago in 2022. Yet the tech, as I've already said, is so simple. And this is because it relies on the inherent properties of the material, the sand. And that's it. All you're doing is you're storing heat energy from solar or from another heat source. And the way you're doing that is you're just pumping that heat into the sand, heating up the sand, and that stores the heat energy ready to be used later on. Now, sand isn't the only form of heat storage. There are other materials such as water, which water has the advantage of being easier to heat, but it can't be heated to as high temperatures as sand because obviously it boils at around 100 C. And if I recall correctly, there are materials that have an even higher heat capacity than sand itself, such as, again, if I recall correctly, gypsum or calcium sulfate. But sand is a very abundant material on Earth and if we apply that to batteries, it makes for a very cheap energy storage solution that can be scaled up almost indefinitely. And this makes it very useful for large scale energy storage, such as grid storage from wind farms, solar farms, ground source energy, and I'm sure there are others. But the principle remains the same. So with all that in mind, I thought, why not try and make one myself? And the simplest way to make one of these sand batteries myself is to use nothing other than a small baked bean can. So I took my can, filled it with sand, and made a little element out of some copper-plated aluminium wire, otherwise known as craft wire, and I submerged the element into the sand. I connected it up to my bench power supply and applied a tiny voltage of around 0.7 to 0.9 volts, which was enough to push around four and a half amps through the wire. And then I started a stopwatch on my phone and began waiting. I momentarily checked the temperature of the sand as well as the wire itself and I waited some more and after half an hour I was pleasantly surprised to find that the temperature of the sand had risen a few degrees so we had effectively charged it a little however it's all well and good heating up some sand what about how well it retains that heat energy so I performed another test I removed the element from the sand and started another timer and momentarily checked the temperature of the sand. And it only held on to its heat for a few minutes, but it did hold on to some heat. And that's a good sign that this technology does indeed work. Although if I wanted to make it more effective on a DIY scale, I'd have to use a more powerful heat source. Sand batteries are one of the things that I want to work on going forward, and I think they're gonna have some really interesting applications and methods of accumulating energy, which I will explore. In the real world, sand batteries have particularly found their use in concentrated solar farms, 
These are arrays of mirrors that beam solar light onto a conduit, which then that concentrated light then gets beamed down onto the sand battery, which then stores said heat energy. But as it develops, the technology will gain ground in many other areas as well. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed my introduction to sand batteries and enjoyed my attempt at making one. Stay tuned for more and I will catch you all next time. Take care. Bye for now.